All right, Uruguay. That's where we're Here going. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Do you know what Uruguay means? No idea. No. So I think it means several things, but the main thing is River of the Painted Birds. Okay. I don't know why. I don't know why they call it. Couldn't really find out, but I guess that's just what the people who settled here originally called it. So we're going to go with that. But we're back in South America. Second second time. Not a whole lot of South American countries. So, hey, we're whenever we're in South America, we got to make a... A big deal out of it. Do a little something special. So last time we were in Suriname, a few episodes back. So now here we here we are, episode twenty five. We're in Uruguay, the second smallest country in South America by size, um, not by population, but um, just a little bit bigger than Suriname. So bigger than um, I'm sorry, smaller than the other like Guyana and. Uh, uh I think it's smaller than Guyana by size. Okay. Population, it's bigger than probably for all three of both those countries. All three yeah. of those countries. Wow. Huh? But by size, yeah, it's it's tiny, but it's not super tiny. Look, we, we've been in Sao Tome. We've been in Monaco recently. We've been in some tight places. Real tiny. <laughs> uh, Tuvalu. Tuvalu is like 24 square kilometers. This is a lot bigger. So this is a step up for the country, boys. We're going to a, a big boy country. And I feel like this is, might be the biggest boy country that we've been to as far as economy, even population. Or we're moving on up. We're moving up a little bit. But this is also, it's the first country in this region. So I think, look, we're going to go to smaller countries. We're going to be back down at the bottom with the little, the small fish. But we, we need to spread out at least the... A lot of similarities in a lot those of similarities. smaller smaller countries. Mm-hmm. So not that they're not unique, but you know. Yeah, they're just there's a lot of small ones. So yeah, we're moving on up. We're going to Uruguay. I feel like this is a country everyone has heard of or at least knows that it's there. If you know, if you're just a run of the mill American dude, you might be like, I've heard of Uruguay. Tuvalu, Tuvalu, no. Right. Sao Tome, probably Maybe, not. not really. Yeah. Uruguay, <laughs> okay, you've at least heard of it. But I was actually surprised going through it. There was a lot of stuff I I didn't know about it. So, hey, you're in for a real learning lesson on this one. And we actually have the benefit of Jason. He's actually been to this country. So I think for yeah. the first time in Country Boy history, we have an expert who's, he can tell us firsthand. <laughs> Local expert on, yeah. on some Uruguay shit. So, so we're going to refer to you a lot on this one because... You're the uh, you're the expert here, but when we get to the conclusion, you're gonna have to say based on our evidence, would you go back again? Sure, sure, that's fair. Um, all right, so let's get into the rundown. So, the capital is Montevideo, and when you talk about Uruguay, I think a lot of what you're talking about is here, just as far as like stuff to do, sort of thing. But mm-hmm. um, can you confirm? Yeah, that's the only place I really spent time. I had. Uh some editing to do some other project. And like, I just had to stay there, which sucked in hindsight. Cause I wanted to see more of the country, but yeah, it was awesome. And like, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So when you were there, you were just in Montevideo or did you go anywhere else? Um, no, just Montevideo. Just there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so we said it was small. So just a size comparison about the size of Washington state, still bigger than I thought. I thought it was like, Small, but I don't know. I mean, Washington State's a pretty good size. Yeah, I think it's, I think yeah. that's a decent size state. If no, I'm yeah. checking out the like, map, nothing to scoff at. Way bigger yeah. than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. So, decent size. It's about 181,000 square kilometers or 70,000 square miles. Um, the population's about 3.4 million. So, pretty good size. And about half of those live in the capital. So, uh, or at least surrounding it. Language. They speak Spanish. We all know that, but they have a like a super strong dialect. Apparently, that's kind of hard to understand. If you if you're if you speak Spanish and you go there, it's a little different Spanish. Apparently, that's just what I heard from. Uh, hey, that's what the internet said. <laughs> um, Definitely, though. I mean, it's but when you were there, much, is it? It's not too much different though from Argentinian. I think. Yeah, you know, it's very. But yeah, they would. I feel like I can speak some Spanish, and I'm like. And with their dialect, like I have no clue what y'all just said. <laughs> and then they speak real slow, I'm like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. It's also it's close to. I mean, 
close to Argentina, but also close to Brazil. So I guess there's a little bit of Portuguese influence, which might be why it's a little difficult. But yeah, so they also, they call this place the Switzerland of South America. I think it, it's got a lot in common with Switzerland, just kind of like being a small country, being a little different than the neighbors and then some other things. But I also think it was kind of like the Netherlands because they're very into human rights. They're very secular. You can smoke weed there. Oh, all right. Can we vote now? <laughs> They had a thing, too, that I don't know that any other country in South America had was things were way, way, way cheaper if you use your credit card. Like, they didn't really? charge the VAT tax. So I saw that. VAT or huh. whatever. I mean, I'm sure. And that was awesome. I was like, went to get ice cream or something. And there was three of two of my buddies met at the hostel and was like, hey, I'll pay. Just so will put it on my card. And it was almost like, had we each paid cash, like one of us would have eaten. One of us got to eat for free almost. It was that much. Yeah. Was like, so I, wow. I did see if you pay with card, you get 18%. Like just deduct off, it. Yeah. So just whatever it is, if you're paying with card, you get an 18 percent like discount. credit. Yeah, you discount. Don't have to pay something else. That's uh, like the opposite of here. Like yeah, you have to pay like merchant fees and the you know uh, the rest of the world. I don't know. I, I, was, I never understood I think it why. Encouraged. I think it did encourage tourism though. Of like, hey, it's super easy for you to come here with your card and pay. And yeah, I don't know. And maybe also for like taxation of like, it's just really easy to keep things. Right. Like it's all processed. And I don't know. That is something too with this place is it's the least corrupt in South America. So it's very, I think they do things kind of by the book, very uh, follow the rules a little more. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Complacent. Less, I was going to say like less dodgy. Yeah. Less yeah. Dodgy. And, and <laughs> not necessarily dodgy, but like also I think more reserved too. Like sure. people in Argentina, Brazil seem to be more. Intense. Boisterous and intense. And I mean. And not, and not a bad thing, but. It's yeah, just, yeah. You know. It's just here they're a little more kind of, hey, yeah. they're reserved, mm -hmm. apparently. I, but That's what I, I mean, honestly, that was my thought on it because I've been to Argentina twice and I went to Uruguay and it was like, yeah, they're like chill Argentinians. Like, yeah. Like, they're very like similar in a lot of ways. Hey, so. maybe it's all that weed they're smoking down yeah. there. <laughs> I think the rest of South America smokes Paraguayan, which is like nasty packed weed and they the joke is they piss on it before they smash it down <laughs> and you like cut it with a razor blade almost and it's okay but it's like a like a almost like hash it's like a block paraguayan weed just sounds <laughs> bad yeah and then it's but then like you know you get like like dro and you're in places like uruguay and you're like damn it's like legit good weed here so you know, which wow. is funny though because it, it was the first country to completely legalize weed i, th I think it was 2012 or 13 and for for it being known as a weed destination or or not as a destination, but like a place that's very liberal with their weed, like you never hear of like, oh, the Uruguayan high end cannabis or, cup kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or some sort of strain I, I that's from there. It's, I think too is you can't get it if you're a foreigner. So it's so only it's there. not like you huh. you know, if you were a resident, you go get it for us, we smoke, no one gives no one cares. Yeah. But like to go buy it. It's not just for like, hey, you're here. Which you got to be. I don't know if that's good or bad. But. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure there's all kinds of laws around exporting. Yeah, that stuff like you can't just just because it's legal where you are, you can't be exporting it to other countries. And yeah, I yeah. guess you you would just think there would be like a strain of weed even that's grown there that made it out or something like yeah, you know Maui Waui or Uruguayan. Panama Red something. Uruguayan punch. Uruguay, yeah, <laughs> Uruguay punch. Uruguay, now you're high. <laughs> I don't know something, but yeah. Maybe one of these days once they, I mean, if they've been doing it this long, maybe we'll see. But, but yeah, so it is the most expensive country in South America too. So what I've seen, and you, you could probably verify this is going from Argentina to there, you're paying not, not that it's expensive, you know, compared to here, but it's maybe on par with like a cheap place in the States or sure. Europe where you're not getting the kind of deals you're getting other places. So most expensive, but still not outrageously expensive, but for South America, for the area, most expensive. And one other thing that kept coming up about this place is it has the world's longest national anthem at around five minutes, if not longer. And I guess there's a big interlude that kind of is subjective, but it's at least around five minutes with this like interlude buildup. <laughs> but that's a long time. I mean... What what's our national anthem? Maybe two minutes, two, yeah, I feel like two and a half, two and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So double that, but imagine that at like a soccer game or whatever. 
I mean, that's a long ass time to be <laughs> standing there. Um, but yeah, that's that's one of the things they're known for is, hey, they have a uh, really long national anthem. But if you had to create a national anthem, what would you like? Let's just say for Country Boy Island, we're we have our island, nice. we have our flag. Yeah. What are we gonna do for the anthem? Are we going to have like a heavy banger, like a, you know, is it going to be like a full band? Are we going to have a, you know, more traditional anthem with maybe an orchestra? I would vote for like a Hendrix thing. Okay. Um, Matt's not here. I'm going to vote for him. EDM. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, I think we'll we'll vote veto Matt's uh, (laughs) techno Maybe we can, do like, we can do a, like a real soft layer on the bottom with it to appease Matt. And then like, he always tells people, and I'm like, if you listen, yeah. really, there's some EDM nonsense. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. And see, Matt. Oh, no, I think to me, like, you know, DJ Cool, let me clear my throat. I think like, like we need like, some build up. Like a jock no, jam. No, a party some, yeah, anthem, like, yeah. you know, I was like, y'all ready for this? Like, yeah. I think like, I, want a, I don't want like a dubstep drop, but I want something where like, I want to rock up. You know, All I right. want something like building, you want a crescendo. Mm-hmm. And that's when we talk about freedom and the things on Country Boy Island. Yeah. I, I think having a, and- <laughs> I think having a pumped up anthem, because I mean, that that is one of the things like when you're watching the Olympics or whatever, soccer games and they're playing the national anthems before. Yeah. And it's always some, you know, old orchestra type song, some yeah. symphony yeah. and everyone's kind of saying they're like about to go to sleep. Fall asleep, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you're about to play a sport you want something to pump you up mm-hmm. i mean i feel like rock and roll part two you know some of that <laughs> let me clear my throat <laughs> and then some hendrix yep. doing the like national anthem kind of like that in that style like, yeah. like you mix that and we some do a little guitar. so definitely an, Matt, uh, definitely yeah, electric guitar solo yeah i think matt and matt needs a little bit we need some kind of <laughs> electronic bs we'll throw in there. There, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so he can like you know yeah. yeah just have like a little like breakdown uh, with a, uh, you know Drum and bass <laughs> type thing, but j- j- just very quick, not uh, not too much. But yeah, I think it's a nod to the founding country boy fathers, <laughs> to all of them. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like having the electric electric guitar and just some sort of pumped up '90s style uh, jock jam, know, jock jam song. Rock. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's an anthem. Yeah, I mean, I'm already kind of excited about this. <laughs> so like, you know, we're gonna like, make this happen. I feel like we're gonna get a lot of gold medals. Just oh yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna want to go to Country Boy Island to compete in the Olympics and to want so to see us win, anthem. so they can celebrate with <laughs> yeah. that song because they're gonna play it. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that is true though. With all those anthems, even at the end, everyone's celebrating. And I mean, I think having heard not every anthem, but. I do feel like the U.S. one is kind of like inspiring where some no, of these no. ones and hey, no offense, Uruguay, it's not the worst anthem, but um, it's long and it's just we, like maybe we could remix it. Because, <laughs> yeah. maybe it needs a, a remix. Of it needs a little remix. Anthems. I mean, if it's five minutes and you have an interlude and you have. No, that's what I call know, anthems. <laughs> <too>. <laughs> yeah, I mean. And not not just to say Uruguay. There's plenty of other countries out there where you hear, and it's just like no. I, mean, I think of like some oh Olympics mm-hmm. and like maybe I don't know, especially the, oh, yeah. the foreign language. You know, the, 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 that thing of not hearing what they're understanding and it being boring music, like pretty low, like low energy. That if ours should kind of transcend language, that like you cannot, you can still feel it, yeah, and not know, know a word of English mm-hmm. and be like, oh, the country boy anthem. I just fucking love it. I want them to win gold medals. <laughs> I don't know. I thought we were going to have a little more to say, but I think we nailed it just with that. Uh, <laughs> good, y'all yeah. ready for this? Yeah. That, that's. And then it's kind of like, let me clear my throat. So it's like audience participation. Yeah. Like we really want like, like it's singer, singer, singer. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, kind of. All right. Well, I guess we have our anthem. Or out of the park. We have the idea. Sometimes we struggle on the topic. Sometimes we do really well. <laughs> nailed it. All right. So. Physical. So one thing about this place, the physical geography, which I guess I kind of imagined, but didn't really know until I started researching it, is it's super flat. It's like, I guess there's rolling hills, um, but it's it's almost all flat farmland. The highest peak is 
like 1600 feet. Oh, wow. So, and, and that's just, you know, the highest hill that's there. But for some reason, I, I thought it'd be a little bit more diverse, but it's pretty flat. There's beaches, there's rolling hills. So, I mean, there's some diversity, I guess, but um, yeah, okay. I, I was surprised just to find out that it was just that much of just like kind of flat farmland in the whole entire country. Yeah, I guess that's it. It's that's the reason they they're good growers because they have right. a shitload of yeah. land, you know. So yeah, I just I don't know. In my head, I just figured, okay, there's probably some sort of like part of a mountain range that's there, or some sort of, you know, not desert, but something, some sort of different terrain. But everything that came up, it was just kind of all the same, rolling hills, flat. One thing that's really weird about Argentina is there's not a lot of good coasts for like beaches. So like a lot of the Argentinians end up going to Uruguay or to Chile. To like, right. Yeah. To I guess. Like another coast, really? Which is huh. weird because you just think like, wow, there's all this coast. Yeah. But, there's like, so much more coast. Than, like, yeah. But huh. it's not that it's not that ideal in a lot of spots. So. Wow. And even in um, Buenos Aires, you think like, you know, it's super humid because by the water, but there's just no good swimming. Right. You know? And it's kind of wow. awful in that sense of like, well, there's no benefit of being by the water. Yeah, like you're trade, there, but trade and all that, but like individuals of like dealing with humidity, but not getting the relief. Huh. Like if there's no beaches in Houston, you know, it's like, right. It's humid, but yeah, no, no benefit. Huh? Um, all right. So the history, so this was always, I don't know, something, I feel like a lot of the history, especially with some of these smaller places, it's kind of like they were settled. This happened. Like there's just kind of some milestones, but it didn't really, I don't know. So some, some places we've been to don't have a, crazy history or anything where I feel like this place, it has, a, it has a lot of history, but it's also makes sense as why this place is the country. Like why Uruguay is a country? Why is it not part of Argentina? Why is it not part of mm -hmm. Brazil? It was originally settled in the 1500s by the Europeans. The main colony was C Colonia, which is right across the water from Buenos Aires. That was established by the Portuguese. So basically Buenos Aires was like the Spanish town the Portuguese created a town across from there, but it kind of caused some tension because they're like, why are you moving in? Why are you making a base <laughs> we see you. next to ours? So that, that kind of caused some tension. So then the Spanish created Montevideo, which is close, but they basically did that to kind of monitor on the same piece of land this mm. uh, Portuguese colony mm -hmm. called Colonia. So there was all, always kind of like this tension on this land starting, I guess, with these cities, but then in the 1800s, I guess as Brazil got sovereignty, Argentina got sovereignty, as these countries kind of got sovereignty, then the sovereign Argentina and Brazil started fighting over this land. So then it was, it was kind of, you know, it basically transferred from like the colonial powers of Spain and Portugal to the regional powers of Argentina and Brazil. I feel that the two dudes that are like, you know, I've been in a lot of South America, though, the two names that are like the big liberators are both European born is Simone Bolivar was like, you know, the Colombia, Bolivia, all that. He was like more that part of South America. And then mm -hmm. the Southern was San Martin liberator. And then like it's everywhere has San Martin boulevards, like all the country, you know? Like, yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know that he was, I think it was Argentina and like Chile or whatever. It was like their, uh, you know, person, but it was weird because they immediately, some of them like immediately went back and kind of did like, okay, we're free of the Europeans. We're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're in power. Yeah. Like, the individuals. Like it wasn't like for the good of all, it was just like most people like, Oh, let's take the power from the people who have the power. Now we have the power. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think all those people, they were still European, you know, it's like the founding fathers of the U S it's like, they were still English sure, people yeah. before, you know, yep. before they split. But then they're like, they still have the same ideas and stuff, but yeah, I, I forget the name. There was some guy that kept coming up that was kind of the Uruguayan liberator, but basically the, the people from here felt different enough from Argentina and Brazil. And they were kind of in between that at some point they just kind of said, look, we're our own. And then it, it stayed from there. And I guess that was around 1828 when it actually became its own country. Mm -hmm. I guess there were constant attempts by Brazil or, Argent or Argentina, but you know, they'd go to try to conquer it, run out of resources and then couldn't do it. And then at some point they signed a treaty and just said, all right, we'll let you be your own thing. But 
when you look at it, you you would think, yeah, it'd be like a state in one of these places just mm. based on the size. Was the guy's name Artigas? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I found him here. So yeah, he was like the, I guess like their George Washington. Yeah, it says that he's their like national hero over there. So yeah, that makes yeah. sense. I think that's the deal. I did the free walking tour in Montevideo and it mm -hmm. was like, they said that, you know, watching Game of Thrones, the Red Wedding, you guys know this episode, right? And they like, they like, brought them all together like a party and they killed them all. And I guess at some point when they were fighting off the Europeans, they used all the indigenous, they used all the indigenous people for this. Hmm. And then afterwards they murdered them all. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So they said like, uh, Uruguay has a super white, it's very like European. Yeah. Like yeah. Some of the other country, like, like Brazil has like mm -hmm. a lot more indigenous people, right? Like the population is part of the, yeah, and so that's another thing. So Argentina and Uruguay, they're both 90% European, where all the other South American countries are like, they're way more mixed just with Argentina and Uruguay. Yeah, at some point there was like a, a genocide and then they also had a lot of late immigration. So a lot of like late 1800s when people were immigrating from Italy or um, from Europe, they went there instead, you know, or like, like the same with the United States when, well, the farming was the exact same. It's so like the Italian farmers could go to Argentina or Uruguay and it was like yeah. the same band except the Southern hemisphere. So they were like excellent farmers. And that's kind of why the tango got going because these people were like stuck in a boat together and there's this mixing of music, but it's a lot of the Italians right. going to like Argentina or Uruguay. But oh, wow. there's a reason they love ice cream so much. They're like such European and like, like it's <laughs> everywhere. It's just like everywhere. It's like, man, you guys love ice cream. Yeah, no, so I, it, I, they're at least 90% European, but I think a lot of it is they wiped out the indigenous and then they just had mass immigration from Europe. And then it was kind of, you know, mm -hmm. that's how it is. But yeah, if you look at people from Uruguay or Argentina versus, you know, Colombia, Peru, I mean, completely different. So basically 1828, they became a country, uh, I guess throughout the, 1900s, they were under like a dictatorship until 1985. Wow. I, I meant to, wow. yeah, I meant to look up this dictator because, you know, you know, we love dictators around we, here, we but do. yeah, I don't know. Nothing was really coming up about this guy. So I assume he was just your run of the mill standard dictator. Not Pretty a standard. really. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I guess after 1985, once this dictator left, they, they became more democratic. And then from there, they kind of Pretty rebuilt everything. Yeah. Culturally, we said a little, a little sleepy compared to other South American countries. But one thing that they're not sleepy about is soccer. So for such a small country, even in South America, I mean, just for that population, for just in the world, the fact that their soccer team is consistently as good as it is, they're constantly producing world-class soccer players. It's kind of crazy. Cause like, huh. Argentina, I mean, I think Argentina is like 40 million people. Okay, they have some of the best soccer players. Brazil, 200 yeah. some million, some of the best soccer players. But Uruguay is up there as far as, you know, national team. They have two World Cups, one, which is pretty crazy. To be fair, they also won these World Cups in like 1930-something, 1950-something. So it's been a while since they've won, but they're constantly making it far in the World Cup. That was a big thing on the walking tour of like, they're very proud of that. And yeah. it's like, because of when the, when they did win, they were so, the odds were so against them and no one thought, you know, so it's just, they're so, yeah, yeah, just so, so proud of that. And yeah. yeah. Nice. And I mean, even recently in the world cup, I mean, they've made it to the quarterfinals or like basically like the round of 16, almost every time quarterfinals, semifinals, they're in the semifinals recently. I mean, they're, they're constantly, way better than they should be just based on like 3 million people. Mm. So yeah, most of the like celebrities, the well-known Uruguayans are all soccer players, but one is super notorious. Lu Luis Suarez, world-class striker, but he's also kind of a, a bit of a bad boy. Oh, he's yeah. gotten in a lot of trouble. There are some allegedly racist things, but I guess, I don't know. There's like a term that they use there that, I guess it it doesn't translate well, but he got in trouble for that. He's got in trouble for like fighting, diving. And then one of the things he's known for 
is biting. He's like bitten three people on separate occasions. The holy field of soccer. <laughs> so this guy is Suarez. He's known for biting. He does also kind of have like a bit of an overbite, but um, <laughs> but yeah, just kind of a dirty player. But this guy who's known for biting got me thinking, have you guys ever been bitten by, not necessarily a human, but dog bite, snake bite, any vicious bites? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you go for so it. So yeah, I, I, I don't know when this was a couple years ago, but I was doing an Uber, part, you know, it was moonlighting and cool chicks picked up from a bar. They're like, hey, you want to come party? And I'm like, yeah. So I went to this other girl's house and super friendly dog. And I'm we're, put some records on and I'm dancing with the owner. The dog bit me twice that night. <laughs> and everyone's like, he's so nice. He's never bit anyone. And he was a male dog protecting his girl. You know, and he felt threatened. And yeah. anyways, I remember being like, you son of a bitch dog. I keep <laughs> cockboxing me because like, it ruined the vibe and like it hurt. Like it bit my stomach and my hand. It was like two different times. Was so, it well, a big dog? No, it was like, you know, small, medium. <laughs> like, you know, like. Like Bowie, like that size, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. like really friendly sized dog not to be worried about. And yeah, I still think about that dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I had an incident with a turtle. Turtle bite. Once, yeah. Uh, I was in, L- uh, no, sorry, junior high in science class. And we had, you know, the teacher had all these like little, you know, reptiles and pets around. And I picked up the turtle and I was playing a little game of chicken with him with my finger. And seeing how, <laughs> I was faster than him and I wasn't. <laughs> uh, he snapped onto my fucking finger, man. And I was just like trying to shake him off. It hurt so bad. That little fucker could, he got no, some, yeah, some grip, man. There's, <laughs> they, there's, there's not gums that they've no, got. It's yeah. just like cart, like, yeah, bone. just like just a bony jaw. Teeth. Yeah, jaw. I mean, that's legit dinosaur shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we often hurt. forget. Like, I, I have a, I had a respect for turtles after, after that. You know, I don't fuck with them. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, he got me good. Never, never been bitten by a turtle. I've somehow made it out with, without getting a lot of bites that are, uh, at least memorable, but I did have a close call one time. Uh, I was with my cousin and we were visiting his friend and this guy was like, just kind of sketchy. I don't really know. And it, friend, I guess is a, uh, maybe not the right term. We were going to this guy's house who was kind of like an acquaintance of my cousin and he has this big dog and we're sitting there watching a show. We're just kind of hanging out. And this dog just has something like for me, like I'm not even like doing anything. I'm just sitting there and this dog keeps growling at me. And it's like a big, like German shepherd or I don't even know, just some mm. big ass dog. And Cap- he keeps a capable dog. I feel like. Yeah. It is. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 It, it's a dog. It's a that's capable breed of <laughs> like <laughs> probably the same weight as me. I mean, huge, big dog and sitting there, just this dog keeps growling. I, I kind of like looking over at, you know, this guy who I don't even know. I've just met him. I'm just kind of like, and he's like, oh no, she's, she's just playing. She's friendly. She's cool. <laughs> it keeps going on, but again, it's not really doing anything. It's just kind of like being intimidating. And then we stand up to leave. And once we stand up, it, it gets on its hind legs and like pushes me against the wall and it has me like pinned up. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the fuck? And th- the they're just laughing, like nothing's happening. And it's growling and in my face. And like I'm I'm thinking I'm about to get bit by it. I'm like, this dog is gonna bite me. And I'm looking at the guy, like, what are you doing? And they're just like, oh, like I'm laughing. Laughing. And I'm like, this isn't funny. This no. isn't fucking funny. Not nah, cool, man. Um, but it came like I thought for sure I was gonna get bit because just how it was acting, I was like, this dog is it's gonna bite me for sure. But it didn't, but I mean, pinning me up against the wall, I was like, I don't know. I thought that, for that, sure I was going to have my yeah. face bit yeah. off. The power move in front of his friends. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, other than like, have you had any any crazy bug bites? Any like big infections or anything? I've no. seen people with some nasty spider bites, like at a host- like a, a rural hostel and yeah. like, they were like, man, he was an English dude, and they're in Colombia, and like, maybe we should go to the, like, take you into town. He's like, yeah, it's not going down. You know, it's a big purple mound. You're like, it looks really bad. I'm glad that's set on me. <laughs> yeah. I, again, didn't happen to me, but my friend growing up when I was a kid, I was probably seven or eight, and his dad was in the army, so you'd have to go out into the field and basically, like, work out in the middle of nowhere, like, in the desert in California for, like, two or three months at a time. 
and his dad was out in the field, comes back early, but basically he was in an outhouse taking a shit and a brown recluse bit him on the nutsack. Oh my God. Oh man. And he was, I remember like not fully understanding it because it was just kind of like how bad, like the severity of it, at least at the time. But it, it, this guy was in the hospital for like over a month. Wow. Just, Jeez. I mean, it, it was a long time and yeah, I just remember thinking I'm like that, <laughs> that had to be the worst, That's the worst, hey, the yeah. worst no, thing to get is. bitten by the worst place to get bitten no, by. by far. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's so embarrassing. Yeah. On top of it. <laughs> it's embarrassing. And you're, you're out. Like you couldn't do anything. You couldn't even walk for, yeah, it, Fuck. at least Damn. a couple of weeks to a month, just straight brutal. in a hospital. But yeah, I think as far as people I know getting bit, that definitely is the worst. Wow. I feel if Matt was here, he'd have a good gator story for us. <laughs> yeah. like back in Florida, yeah, something, something, gator, gator. Speaking of full circle, there's a uh, there's a Florida Uruguay. Okay. Yeah, but there's a lot of yeah. It's crazy. Floor, just you yeah. know, flower. Floor. I think too is like we don't think of like. Like when I grew up, I never thought of Florida as like, oh, the root word is floor. It's flower. Like flower yeah. is the beginning of Florida. Like, and then it does change things. And you're like, oh yeah. But like, I look at it very honky. Of not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Florida. <laughs> but yeah. So I don't know if, if you're in Uruguay, I guess you could get bit by a few things. They do have jaguars. Oh, okay. I don't think they're very prevalent though, yeah. but I think they're there. You get bit by a capybara. I know those are there. Mosquitoes, you know, yeah, standard. mosquitoes for sure. Um, but yeah, so they do have some some wildlife, but I feel like it's not very dangerous. But look, if you're there, who knows? You could get bit by Luis Suarez too. So <laughs> watch out if you see him around. And so other things culturally. So we said first country to completely decriminalize marijuana. They're also really lenient on all other yeah. drugs. So I think you could. You know, you could shoot up there and probably not go to jail. My buddy of mine who's in jail there for a while and he was just like, no, they let you out pretty quick. Like they don't think they don't try to keep you in jail as yeah. long as possible. It's not like, I don't know. Hmm. And it's not like in other countries that wouldn't be the case just because he was from Mexico, you know, and get put in jail there for something stupid. But yeah, like, no, it wasn't that bad. And like I was going to go six years and it'd be like a year and a half or something. I can't remember specific. Jeez. But. Yeah. I mean, I feel like they're, it's like Europe where you, you, most things you get a slap on a wrist and a fine or, you know, you know something, but I feel like they're pretty lenient. One other thing I saw culturally was because it's, it's, I think it's only like 46% Catholic, which for a Latin American country, it's unheard of sure. to be, uh, you know, they're all 80, 90%, but they ch actually changed the name of Catholic holidays. So Christmas is family day. <laughs> uh, Holy week is, tourism week. I don't know what Easter is, but, um, I'm sure they have something for that, but basically they just like renamed the holidays. So it's not, uh, doesn't have a Catholic connotation or Christian. So, Interesting. so yeah, so food and drink. So we know th there's some beefy boys. They love beef here. That's kind of the main thing everywhere. They're the highest consumer of beef per capita. Uh, I think it was something like 10 to 12 meals a week on average have beef in it. So they love beef. They love grilling. That's kind of the main thing. The, the main things I saw, one of the, at least for drink, uh, mate was a huge thing. And basically everyone carries around these cups where they drink mate. And it's like a kind of a special cup with a built-in straw. Like all silver. Yeah. So it's, it's a silver, silver straw and like a clay mug. And I guess you put the mate, which is basically just like a tea. You put the raw material in there, but then you also have to carry around a giant thermos. So people have like, they carry around this cup, then they carry around a thermos with hot water. And then all like just all day, you're just filling up this, this cup. Huh. But it was nice, though, because, like, they have it, and you're like, what, do you want some? And they have extra hot water, so it's very much like, oh, we'll get a cup, and we'll get you. I didn't, I didn't have my own yeah. silver straw. And, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's at a restaurant or something or at a, someone's house or something. It's cool, but I was watching some video, and literally, like, every other person on the streets just walking around, like, double fisting. It, it's cool because it, I guess this is pretty unique just to Uruguay and Argentina, but 
um, that just seems like a pain in the ass, just carrying around yeah, hot water all the time and a uh, mug all the time and then constantly having to fill it up. But it's dedication, man. But it is a cool, like, unique thing that's only there. But it's nice for something like everybody drinks Starbucks in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. It's like mm-hmm. I'd much rather everyone in the U.S. was drinking, like, a tea, and it's way better for you. There's not, like, tons of sugar or milk or, you know, all that bullshit. Right, like right. Starbucks stuff. So, yeah, it is kind of straight different as a thermos, but also it's nice of, like, well, you have water, whatever situation you you're can, in. You like, can get it cold here. The yerba mate. Yeah. Is, yeah. So I've that. seen it cold here. I've never actually tried it's bottled. it. It's good. I've had it at work yeah. a couple times. Yeah, it's pretty good. Have to, it's decent. Have to give it a whirl. Mm. Um, so their national dish is a sandwich called Chivito. We're actually going to, going to sample some here, but it's basically a beef sandwich. Yeah. And nice. I, I guess that's looking forward to it. That's everywhere. But so when you were there, what, what was the, what was the highlight meal? Just straight beef or. Yeah, I mean, it was one of the, like, the f- I remember it was, like, they kept bringing all the different types of beef out, you know, and so maybe a couple of the pork, too, or something, of just, like, just, like, a um, Brazilian steakhouse or Argentinian, and that was really cool, and just them being really proud of that, the grilling, and, yeah, I, mean, I remember some of the sandwiches and, like, you know, the empanadas, you know, the other stuff, you know, the baked, you know, yeah. once you go to Chile, they're deep fried, that's a big difference, is, like, Argentinian, Argentina and... Uruguay in our places, it's more baked empanadas and not that's different, but it's just crazy of like when you bake, when you deep fry an empanada, the ingredients are so much like the interaction is so much crazy, which is good, but it's like unhealthy, you know, it's like yeah. it's heavy mm-hmm. with the baked ones. Like, oh, chicken empanada seems like it's pretty like healthy. Little it's snack, like more, yeah. You know? yeah. Or not snack, but I don't know. All right. Well, oh, and uh, I think the big hot dogs, good. I think all over South America, that's the big super ponchos or whatever. It's just like. Like late at night, five in the morning, six. You know, it's like you see the hot dog vendor. It's like the footlongs. You know, it's like that. Just yeah, gets it. They put all different crap on uh, it. The other thing I did see with Uruguay is every day on the 29th of the month, it's like gnocchi day, and so they just eat gnocchi. I don't know. I guess it's a thing there, but I guess the tradition was you'd eat gnocchi before, like towards the end of the month when money's getting a little thin. So before your paycheck comes in. That was kind of the hmm. official dish of that day, but yeah, <laughs> never heard of that before. But that's cool. All right, so let's try these sandwiches. All right, and then we'll we'll see how we'll see how it stacks up. Yeah. All right, so we we just tried some Chivito sandwiches, mm. or our, at least a version of them. So the ones we had, it was steak, bread, obviously a sandwich needs those and bread. meat and bread. Um, it had ham, cheese, lettuce, a little topping, but with this sandwich, I feel like it's like, it's their national dish, but you can put anything on it. So eggs, bacon, olives. What'd you guys think? At least as far as the version of the sandwich, as far as the national dish goes, I I dug it. I don't know if it's national dish, uh, worthy. I think Uh, it's, yeah, just as a sandwich in general, you know, like a, just having a sandwich as your national dish, I would think that they would, you know, do some like a, something on the grill or barbecue or something like that. Uh, but it was it was good, but I wouldn't stake my whole national heritage. You wouldn't on stake it. your whole. <laughs> <life. laughs> yeah, I I agree. Um, I thought it was really good, but not maybe not national dish level, but. Um, but what would you say, like, the American equivalent of that would be before we, like, really, like, fried chicken, you know? Like, I don't know. American dish? Maybe fried like chicken. That, yeah. Do we have a national dish? What What is the... It would probably be a cheeseburger. Yeah. Cheeseburger, apple pie, yeah. some pop. Which is also a sandwich, so, yeah. Yeah. Argentina is known for their wine. Uruguay, I don't... It's not as much. I feel like Argentina and Chile are, like, the wine places of South okay. America. But we couldn't find some Uruguayan beer... So we got some Uruguayan wine. Has it breathed? I don't know. Breath breathed enough? Yeah. Breathed? It smells a little strange, but we're going to try this and uh, see. Uh, that's grapes. See? Mm-hmm. And I, I forget. I think it's it's tannin is like the style or the grape that they grow there, but let's see. Okay. It's 
It's not bad. Yeah. Are we supposed to spit it out? Or we, you know, that's something <laughs> different. I'm not. As long I don't as you're know. not trying to get drunk. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not that kind of a drinker. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, yeah, it's not fine. bad. Yeah, it's. I I feel like with wine, you, I mean, you could put anything in front of me. I I will say, I think the Moldovan wine might have been a little. It was it was good. A little yeah. better. I like the Moldovan wine, <laughs> but I also yeah. was drunker when I was drinking. <laughs> yeah. To, to be fair. <laughs> At least with this one, it's it's good, but let's see. So we've had Moldovan wine. We've had, we didn't have a Suriname rum. We had, that was Guyana in rum. It was close enough. But close enough. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. This one's not bad though. I would. No. And totally again, I mean, this is just one like maker's Uruguayan wine, but, but yeah, so they are known for wine. They do have like a wine region. So you're making a face, Jason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a big wine guy. Anyways. Yeah, I'm not a big wine guy either. But, but you know, when I was in Mendoza, Argentina, I drank a ton of Melbeck, and it was so good. Yep. Like, no hangover, and it was che- even like the cheap dollar box wine was awesome. I don't know. It was like, that was my best wine experience my whole life. I was like, mm. I love it. I've never really <laughs> felt like that. Like, it's okay. We've definitely been wasted and chugged a lot of wine and wake up like regretting <laughs> it. But yeah, I've, I've had a few instances with wine where you drink it and you're like, oh man, I get why people pay this much, but it's far and few between. Most yeah. of the time, even, I don't know, if I drink wine, then it's- yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not like stirring some Kool-Aid and sugar to my wine. You know what yeah. I mean? I'm like, it's just messy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a yeah. purple Soros Rex, about a half cup of sugar. I need, a, right. I need a shot of Jägermeister <laughs> in this wine to really uh It's like a balance boiler, boiler maker. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's food and drink. Basically beef. I looked into the desserts, but wasn't really a whole lot. They're just kind of your standard run of the mill. Uh, yeah, dulce de leche. Yeah, that, here, yeah. that was Ice the main cream. thing. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're good, but I think on the Suriname episode we had a dessert to try. But hey, today we just had the sandwich. I'd say pretty good, but it was good. It was um, good. But yeah, I'd like I, to try some of this. You know, multi course beef sampling they have going on mm-hmm. with all the different cuts. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so lastly, we'll go to the activities, things to do when you're there. This, I was honestly kind of surprised. I thought there'd be way more things. I don't know. A, a lot of it was kind of the same stuff, but we had mentioned the, the beach town, G- Colonia, which is the Portuguese colony across from, mm-hmm. or the former po- Portuguese colony that's across from Buenos Aires. That's the only, or I guess they have two UNESCO world heritage sites. So that's one of them. But I guess the old town there is supposed to be kind of still in the, you know, Portuguese style. There's a few things in Montevideo, like the Palacio Salvo. That was something that kept coming up. It's, I guess, one of the main buildings in the square is kind of like a, I guess, used to be a hotel. Now it's either a like government building or something. The Estadio Centario Soccer Stadium. You know, that was where the first World Cup final was at. Oh, wow. There's a museum there. I, I do think we go back to geography real quick, though, is yeah, you have pretty flat and it's farmland, but they're pretty, like, wealthy, at least compared to most other countries. So, like, some of my friends, I see them go to, like, Patagonia and they'll go to other places in South America. So it's pretty kick-ass in that way. They're, like, intra South America. It's like, well, go to, yeah, what do you want? You know, yeah. you don't have it here, but you want mountains? Okay, like. Yeah. You know, so if you're living there... You can travel around South America pretty easily. Or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's cheap flights like from there to uh, Mendoza. It was like 75 US or something like that. So it's definitely like cheap to, you know, something yeah. a while ago. But so, yeah, I guess that's one thing. If, yeah, if you're there, you're probably getting out. But yeah, really, I mean, that's a couple national parks, a couple things, but way less than I thought as far as like, the tourism goes, the infrastructure, a lot of the things I was seeing or things that kept coming up were like, you can't even, a lot of like guidebooks are not even like guidebooks for Uruguay. It'll be like, you get the Argentina guidebook and then there's like a chapter on Uruguay. So as far as like promoting themselves with tourism, it just doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of, you know, oh, you gotta go here, you gotta but do I think this. Like for Colonia, oh. that's a big thing for like Buenos Aires. Yeah. Like you take the ferry, you go to Colonia for a day trip. That's a big day and trip. And you go back or to a day, you know, you stay the night and go back the next day yeah. or whatever. So I think a lot of it is, you know, I, I get that if you like, but I don't even think about like 
people come into Austin, you're like, would this city be better if all those people didn't visit? You know, like, is the tourism that amazing? I'm like, glad it does for the economy, but like, kind of a pain in the ass to deal with. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, that's, I think most, even like that's Buenos Aires, there's sure. like neighborhoods and different things, like with, at least with Montevideo, it's kind of like, oh, there's a couple neighborhoods, there's a couple areas, but there's not like, oh, you go here for this. It, it's just kind of, sure. I think when you're there, you're more low key, you know, not doing the hustle and bustle thing, but with most cities you go to, there's like, okay, sure. 10 different sites with this. It's yeah. kind of just like, you're just kind of, you're there more for just the experience of doing nothing, which yeah. not, not saying it's a bad thing. It's no, just, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Slow living, slow living. We, we've had our, uh, rundown so far. So what are we thinking? Are we going here? Let, let's start with the expert. Are you going back there? Yeah, I like, and honestly, I just on this information, I would be never going there before. I think be like, oh, it sounds pretty interesting, and even just the differences between the other South American countries. Um, it would be a country I would move to. Like, I would, I could see living there, like legit. And I kind of thought about it. Um, I, I've heard it's not that difficult to get citizenship there. If like, mm. like, anyway, so. Yeah, I would totally go there. Uh, super nice people, and yeah, I'm down. Definitely. So, this compared to the other countries we've gone to, is this the top of Jason's list? As far as like, well, I went to Belize. Dominica. I went to Belize okay. after we did an episode, and I can totally see like Belize, Belize is pretty kick ass, and it's like definitely got a lot of things of like Mexico. Like it's it's nice. It's way chill. It's like five hundred thousand people. Blah blah blah. But I don't know that I really see myself living in Belize. I could, you know, it's definitely not a bad place to have a vacation home. Mm -hmm. But of the countries we've been to, yeah, I think Uruguay's place I could legitimately see myself like moving to, like without any crazy circumstances. Yeah. Just like, like leave Austin and live there and probably a pretty cool life, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're a hundred percent all in. I'm a hundred on this, yeah. <laughs> Justin, what's your uh, good sandwiches, good wine? Legal weed, beaches. Yeah, I'm in. This sounds great. Safe, too. I think there's not a safe. lot of, like... Yeah, it's like, safest yeah. in South you America. Know, and Jason's uh, going to be living there, so I can just yeah. go visit yeah. him. Free place to stay. I mean, free free place place girls, to stay. <laughs> you know, hook you up. Might get married before you go home. Sounds <laughs> sounds wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in on this one. Um, no real red flags. There's nothing... Everything seems cool, and... Um, there's nothing that stood out that was kind of like, yeah. I think the one thing with like, hey, the landscape, but it's like, yeah, but you have beaches. I think in time you're like, right, yeah, like you don't have this or this or this, but yeah, but you have the ocean. It's yeah, kick ass. and and I don't think the like physical geography was a deterrent for me. I think I just expected with most sure. countries outside of you know like yeah Tuvalu or whatever. It's like some variety. oh, there's a variety yeah. of things, yeah, and I just expected that where when I was kind of. Researching it, I was like, oh, it really is just farmland. And I knew that's what it was just with like the number of cows and beef that they eat. But I just didn't know <laughs> it's that extent where it was like, oh, that really is the whole thing. But I don't think it's a bad thing. But oh. um, but yeah, I think I'm in. Nice. We could do the country boy English immersion school in Uruguay. <laughs> <laughs> do pretty good. That is something I, I did see too that they, compared to other places, they do speak English more, let's Definitely, say, than yeah. other South American countries. I think it's just the education. Because they're more educated. Yeah, like I've heard that like Argentina used to have more, they would teach English and then just kind of became like, what are the last how many years? Like things have been, have been good. So like the younger kids just don't speak it as often. Yeah. Which is weird because usually the opposite. Like in Germany, it's like the older people don't, sometimes don't speak it as well, but everybody young is completely Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's interesting. All right, well, we got another we got to go to unanimous it. send us some money so we <laughs> yeah. can uh, get four plane tickets, maybe five if champagne can. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see uh I feel like this is pretty high on the country boy list as far as compared to other countries, but we're going to have to see how it compares to Dominica who's our current number one title holder. Oh, really? I forgot. So, hey, we'll we'll get around to that, but um, all right, so where next? Where do we want to go to next? We've been. No. I feel like we need. To it's go going to be a Africa. while before we go back to South America. I feel like we need to go back to Africa. Back to Africa, or I feel like we've Asia. done most of Africa. 
Really? <laughs> we, we barely scratched the surface. On, on You're like we need to go to the west coast of Af- like, okay. like, or like Liberia or something like that, or like one of the smaller countries, like that whole area. I don't know that much about, to be honest. Yeah. Like, Who was uh, the Gaddafi country? What was that? Libya. 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 I, we, I think we still have a while just because Libya is a pretty, pretty big country, big, but yeah. may, maybe we could do, um, yeah. Either Gold Coast. The West Coast of Africa. We were at Sao Tome, which is technically on the West Coast, but it's, kind it's of a, a little Portuguese different because it's an island. Colony too, right? We were just in Oceania, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, maybe we'll either Eastern do... Eastern Europe. Yeah, maybe, we could go I there. Asia? We haven't been to... M- maybe maybe Lao, the Middle East. Lao? Oh. Maybe uh, Oman. Yeah. Qatar. I've heard Oman's a good entry, Oman. A good entry yeah. into the... M- maybe we'll go back to the Middle East, because I think the last time we went was Bahrain, and that was a while ago. Yeah. So. Sounds fun. Some Arabian Nights. Maybe, maybe Qatar. I don't know. Qatar. I feel like that's the... <laughs> The second smallest one. You know what a diamond cutter is? <laughs> <laughs> We're about to find out. Oh, there's all kinds of World Cup stuff we can talk about. And yeah. Cutter. So, yeah, I guess, I don't know. All right. We have a good uh, a good plan, at least, narrowing it down. So we'll see. But, yeah, I guess we'll see you on the next one. But that was Uruguay. All right. Cheers. Later. Cheers.